Do you want 200,000 VC? If so, watch this video the whole way through, drop a like, drop a comment, and hit that subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter, the link is down below. All you gotta do is send me proof that you did everything I said and let me know if you're Xbox or PS4. That's all. Enjoy the video. 2020 is upon us. A new year. A new decade. There are numerous debates on what is the best of the best of the decade. The best movie of the decade. The best song of the decade. The best video game of the decade. So on and so forth. But today, we are discussing what is the best NBA 2K of the decade. NBA 2K11 all the way to 2K20. 2K10 is not eligible for this list. For one, I didn't play it. 2K11 was my first 2K. Not to mention, NBA 2K10 came out in 2009. This top 10 is not based off of popularity. It's not based off any of that. This is all my opinion. So you can't tell me that I'm wrong. Because this is my opinion. So don't attack me. Also, be sure to let me know what your top 10 favorite NBA 2Ks are. What is your favorite 2K of all time? And make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Turn on post bell notifications. It helps me out a lot. So without further ado, let's get into the list. Number 10, NBA 2K18. You gotta admit, I had you by surprise. There is no way you knew that 2K18 was going to be number 10. Boy, if you don't... Yeah, this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. NBA 2K18. The 2K that introduced the neighborhood. Everyone was so excited about this idea. At this point, I was done with 2K, and I was off of Xbox and everything. PS4 players, please don't attack me for playing on Xbox. I'll be on PS5 next year. But that's not what this video is about. NBA 2K18's Neighborhood was a failure. The Neighborhood seemed like a great idea that we were all excited about, and then it just didn't pan out. It was a huge inconvenience to have to walk around the whole block just to play with your friends. Not to mention, joining your friends off your console, the phone, it was a nightmare. This was the hardest 2K to get into your friend's park. Although NBA 2K20 has had an awful launch, 2K18's launch might have been worse. Your My Player could literally get deleted. The sad part is, we got into all these problems. We didn't even start talking about the gameplay yet. Gameplay wise, this is by far the worst 2K of all time. There was a lot of exploits in the game such as the blow by cheese and the snatch back cheese. Also, it's funny how the last couple years everyone talks about how bad paint defense is. But in this game, paint defense was the absolute worst. You could literally be in perfect defensive position and in the paint, but rebounding athletic finishers can just dunk on you like you're not even there. Not to mention the neighborhood, the parks look really boring. Obviously 14, 15, 16, and 17, even though it's the same parks as 16's parks, but I'll throw that in anyway. They were really nice looking parks and they were fun to play on. As opposed to this game where it kind of feels like you're at prison in a way. It's just a really, let's just say, not so fun environment. Now there are going to be some 2Ks that are on this list where the gameplay is not the greatest. However, some just have a good experience. And what I mean by that is good game modes where you and your friends just hop on and play. Or you can hop on by yourself, you know, you know what I mean by that. Or the gameplay is just fun. Fun, even if it's broken or bad, I'm sure you guys know already what 2Ks I'm talking about off that description alone. But 2K18 is at the bottom because the gameplay was horrible, the experience was horrible, there was nothing good or redeemable about the game as far as gameplay or experience goes. However, I will admit there are some things this game got right. This was the 2K that introduced dual archetypes, which is an improvement from single archetypes that 2K17 had. Also, I would take dual archetypes over pie charts any day of the week. They were just more versatile, you know? Also, this was the first 2K where you could earn your badges in the park, in the pro-am, in the walk-on, and you can even earn your badges in the practice facility. But other than that, 2K18, this game sucked. I'll obviously say 2K20 is worse, but here's the thing. 
I was thinking that too until I went back and played the game again. That's what this gameplay you're seeing right now is from. If you want to see the full gameplay with the audio, I'll leave the link in the description. It's a really good and funny video. You won't regret that. But once I went back to 18, I realized that it is the absolute worst 2K. And there will never be a 2K worse than this. At least, I hope. Something I failed to bring up in my commentary was... These other 2Ks, they had potential. And 2K18... There was never any potential to begin with. The game was a failure from start to finish. But now, on to my next pick. Number 9! NBA 2K! 20! So coming in at number 9 is 2K19 and a half. That's not the neighborhood, but you guys can think whatever you want. That's not the neighborhood, but you guys can think whatever you want. Okay, I know that was a bad joke, but seriously, 2K20, unlike 2K18, it had serious potential. In the beginning, the gameplay was alright, but... There were numerous problems other than that in the beginning of the game. There were so many problems at first, such as your badge progression, attribute progression, and your my park rep freezing. Also, fading threes was a huge problem at first. That was the only real gameplay issue in the beginning. But 2K, this is a 2K where patches ruined the game. They made it to where whites fall way too much and... I think they made it easier to green shots. I feel like shooting is way too easy now. In the beginning, there was actually a skill gap with shooting. But even if they didn't really patch anything or anything like that, the gameplay is just boring. This year is a struggle for small YouTubers such as myself because no one wants to watch this game. Even their favorite YouTubers. 2K views are drastically dropping. I mean, of course, the big, big names such as Agent, I'm Davis, Duke Dennis, they're going to drop six figures no matter what. But this year, 2K is just bad for YouTube. To be honest, I would say the 2K20 demo was better than this entire game. In the demo, the game speed was actually good. And the game actually had a lot of potential. The dribbling was still really good. But when the game actually launched, it felt like a whole different game than the demo. It was just bad. If you flip the release date between 2K19 and 2K20, if 2K20 was 2K19 and 2K19 was 2K20, 19 would actually feel like an improvement over 20, but 19 was the previous game. 2K really took a step back. 20 is more similar to 2K18 than 2K19, and that's a serious problem. Hopefully 2K can get back on the right track in 2K21. They had some good things going in 19, but we didn't get to 19 yet. So we are just not going to get too much into 19 yet. But like I said earlier, 2K20 had potential. 2K18 had no potential. 20 actually showed signs of being a great game. 2K18 never showed that. And that is why 2K20 is number 9 and 2K18 is number 10. I hope you guys are still here. This is a long video and I apologize. Number 8! NBA 2K12! I don't care what you say. NBA 2K12 was amazing! As far as gameplay goes. NBA 2K12 also had the best intro of any 2K. There I said it. Look at the intro man. All the old school and new school players going at it. It's beautiful man. It really is a thing of beauty. Not to mention the perfect theme song, Basketball by Curtis Blow. I seen Agent's video where he played every 2K and he said that you get tired of this song. I didn't get tired of this song. I watched this intro the whole way through every single time during this game's life cycle. Back then, Chris Smoove made this game seem more fun than it was. Before playing My Career Was A Chore, My Career Was Actually Fun, thanks to Chris Smoove. It also had the Who's The Greatest Game Mode. That's why this introduction exists, because the theme of this game was, who is the greatest team ever? But the reason why 2K12 is low on the list, although the gameplay was good, not much wrong with it, there wasn't much content. Remember, experience is a factor, there wasn't really any modes. 11 had crew mode, 2K12 didn't bring it back, there was no blacktop, no park, none of that. 
the only way you could play with your friends was team up. And it wasn't all star team up back then. It would be two random teams. It could be two really bad teams. And it wouldn't be very fun like that. And for that reason, NBA 2K12 is at number 8 in spite the gameplay being pretty solid. It's honestly better than the 2Ks that are going to be ahead. Not all of them, but a lot of them. But these other 2Ks that are ahead, they have a better experience. Number 7! NBA 2K13! So going back to what I said about 2K12 being a solid game but doesn't have the greatest experience. 2K13, the debut of Blacktop, which was so fun in spite the fact that 2K13 had arguably the most broken gameplay. If this list was based solely off of gameplay, 2K13 will most likely be number 10. Yes, 2K13's gameplay was most likely more broken than NBA 2K18's gameplay. Anyone that played 2K13, y'all probably know. I see a lot of people on Twitter say 2K13 was the worst 2K. In spite the broken gameplay, such as fading threes contested going in, hop steps being OP, and most importantly, you couldn't block dunks. Now, 2K13 was the 2K that debuted my team. This year, my team was actually really fun. I know a lot of you like my team, but I think my team was much better in the first few 2Ks. In 13, there was just bronze, silver, and gold packs. Teams were a lot more diverse as opposed to other 2Ks where basically everyone has the same players. The main problem with my team this year was the fact that fading threes, like I mentioned earlier, would go in contested. The meta on 13, my team, was to just get a great shooter such as Steve Kerr or Del Curry and just shoot fading threes with them the whole game. But in spite of all that, NBA 2K13, my team, and Blacktop, and even my career, they were all really fun. Gameplay-wise, this game is horrible, but the experience, the memories... I look back and I had some really good times on this game, and with my friends. That's why it's ahead of 2K12, 20, and 18. Number 6! NBA 2K14! The debut of the park! My team was still lit! The LeBron mode! You could buy 99 and badges instead of having to grind for them! And also the debut of 2K on next gen! The gameplay was also really broken in this game. Zigzag Cheese was OP. Alley Oops were OP. Chase Down Blocks were OP. But in spite of all that, this was a solid game. It was really fun, and in spite of Zigzag being so OP, if you learn how to dribble, the dribbling was actually really good in this game. Not to mention the game was very fast paced and fun, which is something 2K has gotten away from in recent years, and they need to get back to the 2K 14, 15, 16, 17 game speed. A lot of people think 2K 14 is the best. I think the game's a little bit overrated, but overall, it's pretty nice. That's honestly all I gotta say about it. Number 5! NBA 2K17! This is the only footage I have of me playing NBA 2K17. This was the very first night and my very first game playing Park without playing my career. None of us had any badges so don't judge. Anyway, coming at number 5 is NBA 2K17. A lot of you think this should be number 1. Some think it should be in the top three, but I'm going to tell you why it's at number five. First, I'm going to talk about the great things such as the park rewards. They added new mascots such as the Sixers mascot, which was huge for me as a Sixers fan. Unfortunately, I did not get Superstar 3 or whatever it was you got mascots in this game. They also added jetpacks, which was really cool. A lot of people said it slowed you down. I wouldn't know because I didn't get jetpacks. Game speed was phenomenal, playmakers with their dribbling, man, the dribbling, man, it was so good. A lot of people blew up because of how good the dribbling was. This year was the birth of dribble gods. Guys like Hank the Tank blew up, Agent blew up this year. Obviously he wasn't a dribble god, but, you know. This year was the debut of Archetype. Archetypes. Check Bruh. Siri, I wasn't talking to you. 
But anyway, this was the beginning of the end of the skill gap in NBA 2K. I'm sorry y'all, a lot of you think 17 had this high skill gap, but archetypes kind of killed it. Shot creators were OP, they could green spin jumpers from half court contested or not. Sharpshooters could rip playmakers, but playmakers couldn't rip sharpshooters. Don't even get me started on insights being able to shoot threes. This was also the 2K that debuted Hall of Fame badges. In my opinion, there shouldn't be Hall of Fame badges. I think they're too OP. And it's kind of a bailout for bad players that can get these badges. This game was also way too arcadey for my liking. I don't like games that are just full on arcade. I want like a combination of arcade and realism. And some of the games that are ahead of this one have that. But compared to some of the recent games that we've gotten, 17 is golden. At the time, I definitely wasn't digging it. I viewed this as a huge step back from 2K16. Those that loved it, it was probably your first 2K. If this was your first 2K, you get a pass. But if you think 17 was the best and you actually played 15 and 16, then I don't know what to tell you. Number 4, NBA 2K19! NBA 2K19 had so much potential. Overall, it was a pretty solid game, but it was kind of broken. Not only was it broken, it was not balanced. In 2K19, you did not need a guard on your team because of how OP stretch bigs, lockdowns, and post scores were. You could run all stretch bigs or all lockdowns, and you could be alright. But play styles were so diverse this year, there was all different kinds of play styles, unique archetypes, so many fun ways you can play. Content was so versatile, which is why so many people were blowing up in 2K19. It was a big year for YouTube. I honestly wish I would have came back during 2K19, not during 2K20, but the game changed the past. In 19, the neighborhood was much improved from 2K18s, but overall, the game was good. It just needed better balancing. Also, 2K needs to get rid of the neighborhood for good. Number 3! NBA 2K11! My very first 2K! I loved this game. I didn't have Xbox Live back then though, so I didn't get to play crew. But my career was so fun. It was my first time playing as a my player. Just creating your own player and being in the NBA, it seemed surreal, man. And how cool it seemed to you depended on your imagination. Also, the Michael Jordan mode was awesome. The gameplay was great. I seen Agent do a Change My Mind video 2K edition. He said 2K11 was underrated. I actually don't think 2K11 is underrated at all. I think it gets the praise it deserves from the people that actually played it. 2K11 ain't talked about enough because a lot of young people never played it. Obviously I'm not saying I'm old. I'm clearly not old, but yeah. There are a lot of people whose first 2K was 17, 18, or 19, even 20. Not to mention the people who didn't start playing 2K till next gen, like 14, 15, 16. So unfortunately, a lot of people didn't get to experience the greatness that was NBA 2K11. So is it underrated? No. The people that did play NBA 2K11, we all worship the greatness that this game was. It 100% deserves to be at number 3. Number 2! NBA 2K15! Hey guys, I might start getting emotional. You might not see me on the webcam for the rest of this video. NBA 2K15, the most broken yet fun game ever. This game had it all. Remember when I was talking about experience earlier? Park, the debut of affiliations, the debut of the Jordan Rec Center, the debut of the stage and high rollers. In my opinion, the best storyline my career ever had with the undrafted free agent. No archetypes, you can make 7 foot demigods that can do it all. Realistic or not, being big and being able to do everything is fun as hell. I had mad people to play with because there was a bunch of people I could hop on and play 2k with and have fun. I don't get that nowadays, everyone's so serious. In 15, we didn't care as much about the win. No one did. Everyone went for poster dunks, ankle breakers. You know, ankle breakers didn't really happen. Acrobatic layups. 
every score needed to be a highlight. Of course the game was broken, it wasn't perfect, but it's number two because the experience was great, a lot of great game modes. I didn't even mention my team, my fault. Yeah, there was also my team. The game was just so much fun. I don't care what y'all say, I'd rather have a game like 2K15 than a game like 2K19 or 17 any day of the week. Open up 2K15 servers! Before I reveal my top pick, pretty obvious what it is. Don't forget to let me know what your top 10 NBA 2Ks are. Or you can just tell me what your favorite 2K is and not have to list the top 10. And make sure you like and subscribe. Number 1! NBA 2K16! The best 2K of all time! NBA 2K16! The perfect balance of arcade and realism. The game had a skill gap for the most part. When this game first came out, it was almost perfect. The only thing they needed to change was they needed to tune down ankle breakers. Patch 3 kind of messed up the game by making contested shots fall a lot more. And then Patch 6 just really killed the vibe of the game. But Patch 6, Patch 3... Still more enjoyable than 2K20, 2K19, 2K18, and 2K17. 16 had a great dribble system that I wish they would bring back. The outside-inside balance system was great. The defense was perfect. I don't see why they can't have 2K16 defense every year. It was just so great. The rep rewards were awesome, and the skateboard, back when the skateboard was fast, you got a pet tiger. I'll take a pet tiger over a jetpack. I'll even take it over the helicopter. This game was so great. I played thousands of games on it. I had hundreds of 16 videos on this channel, but I deleted or unlisted a lot of them because I was very toxic. And some of the some of the videos I posted were just embarrassing. But if you want to go back and watch some of my 16 videos, you can. But I just had so much time on this game. I had so many people to play with. We could streak like it was nothing. There wasn't near as much RNG as there has been the last few years. I really, really miss this game. They should open up the servers for this game. And they should... They should try and make their 2Ks more like this game. The memories I have on this game, they were just so great that anytime I see 16 footage or anything like that, I get emotional, man. It, it's weird to get emotional over a game, but I made so many great memories on this game. Also, the loading screen was the best on this game. Leaderboards, bring back leaderboards! Actually, they won't do that because people boost! 15 slowing screen was great as well. But yeah, NBA 2K16 was the best 2K of all time. And there's nothing you can say in that comment section that changed my mind. If you want to see the full video of me dropping off this Legend 4 in 2K16, then I'll leave the link in the description. It's almost at 1,000 views, so help me get 1,000 views on that video. Why not? If you enjoyed this video, drop a like comment and subscribe this is also my first time in front of the webcam let me know how i did and if you want to enter for a chance to win a 200,000 bc coup make sure you drop a like comment subscribe follow me on twitter link is in the description all you gotta do is send proof that you like this video comment it on this video it doesn't have to be a top 10 like you can just comment whatever you subscribe to the channel Post bell notifications I'll leave optional, and more importantly, proof that you watched the video the whole way through. That way you get rewarded for watching this long ass video, because I know this is a lot of time, but I put a lot of time in this video, so I want everyone to see all the work that I put into it. But that's all I got for you guys today. I'm out. Peace.